Welcome to part four and the finale of the Pioneer System series. I hope you all enjoyed watching it as I have enjoyed making it. Although this is a four part series covering in detail a number of major variations, there are still many, many more possibilities out there. Needless to say, we've only scratched the surface here, but the foundation has been established. So let's begin this finale focusing on another major variation with this 29-25 move. So, how do we get into this position? It's actually very similar to part one, and let's reset the board so we can see exactly how we got there. As I mentioned in all of these previous videos, the Pioneer is all about formations and patterns as opposed to specific openings. But let's focus on the opening that we have been, and that's 914, 2217, and 1116. So just like in part one, 2419 is played, 811, 2522, 1115, 1713, the exchanges. For eight. Now in part one, we talked about this 2218 advance, but here in this major variation, we're going to delay with 2925. After this move, once again, red is just going to march toward the center with 811. And now white has to be careful. White cannot play 2218. This move will lose by this 1015 move. So instead, once 29-25 is committed, 22-17 to the side as a flanking attack must be played. Here's where we're going to break off into two major variations. The first, I'm going to focus on this 11-15 move, which in some texts has been redeemed as maybe inferior or weak. I actually think it's okay. After 11.15 is played, 25.22 is the best play for white, and red is going to take. White's going to take the double, and red is going to take back. Here, it's best for white to attack this piece on 16 by removing it and playing 23-19 next. Red is going to start developing out of its back row. 2-7 is best. 3-8 is also good, but 2-7 is best. Now white has to be careful if 31-27 is played, red has a really nice pitch, actually a couple of pitches, and it goes 14-18, 7-11, and then 10-14 for the triple jump and the win. So that's a move to keep an eye out for. 30-26 instead is best. And for red, it's also best to simplify the position by going 10-15 and allowing the exchanges. And now white is going to attack this bridge and red is going to get in for a king. After 22-17, the natural 14-18, and the white is going to exchange the piece off 5. After 12-16, 32-27 can be played. I like this deceptive 21-17 move, allowing red to get a king, but that's okay. Advancing into 14.
and now red is going to move into the 18 square hoping to pin the piece on 26. White does not allow that. Instead by going 26, 22, 18, 23 next, 22, 18, and now red is going to get a king. White is going to go under the bridge and gets a crown. Now red has to be careful. If red goes 25, 22, white can actually pitch 10 to 6 first, and it doesn't matter the jumps, followed by 31, 27, and white will win with the double jump and the position. So instead, it's best for red to go into 21. Now white can pitch 10 to 6. Pressing the piece here, and then after 10 14, red can play 21 25. Then after 6 10 and the exchange here, it is a clean draw and a very good game. So let's play that through again, but this time you can see it from a white's perspective. Okay, let's play this sequence again, but this time you can see it from White's perspective. So again, we can open 914, 2217, 1116, 2419, 811, 2522, 1115, 1713, exchange. For eight, and instead of this 2218, we have this delayed 29.25. After 8.11, as I mentioned before, this natural looking 22.18 will lose by 10.15. After the exchange here, the exchange here, white will be pinned to the side and red will dominate control the center after the 16.19 exchange. So 22.18 is no good in this position. Instead, the flanking move with 22.17 is best. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to break off ultimately into another variation here, but I'm going to focus on the 11-15 advance so you can see it from White's perspective. After 25-22, red capture, the double jump, and getting the piece back. Eliminating the piece on 16 is best here for White. Going 23-19. After 2-7, I mentioned that this 31-27 move will lose by the double pitch here with 14-18, 7-11, and then 10-14 for the triple. So watch out for this move. Instead, 30-26 is best followed by the double exchanges here with 10-15. And now a sequence may go 22-17, 14-18, advancing 13-9, getting rid of the piece on 5. After 12-16, again, this 32-27 will be good as well, but I like 21-17, allowing the advance here. Looking to pin the piece on 22, but white does not allow that to happen. Getting a crown, white beginning to go under the bridge. And again, if the press continues here, white has the 10-6, followed by the 31-27 move to win. So instead, it's best 
for red to go onto the 21 square and now the pitch can happen safely. And then the game will draw. Here we are at the landing, and instead of 11.15, as I previously showed, I'm going to talk about the second variation with 16.20, which is also very, very good. After 16.20, it's best for white to advance 19.16. Next. Here, a number of books give this 14.18 move, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's very good, too. But I like this 11-15. It's natural advancing toward the center of the board and really can result in some fine play, which I will show now. After 26-23, Red can start the advance and take control of this 19 square. White is going to cover up. 3026. And now once again, the best move for red is this unnatural break with 1015. Which allows white to capture this 11 square, which it does. Red is going to go 19 to 24. And here we have some very, very interesting play developing. The next best move for white is to pitch out this piece on 6 by going 13-9. What this does is it opens up a hole in red's core after 25-22. Now, instead of 25-22, if white tries to attack the piece on 24, red can actually win with a very pretty shot. If you can see this, you are well on your way to being a very, very good player. This is a deceptive shot. So I'll pause for a moment while you look over this position, and I recommend even pausing the video at this point as well. The winning sequence for red is 15-18, white taking the jump, and now 14-17. It does not matter which way white jumps first, as you will find out. But let's say it jumps 23-14. Now 5-9 is played. White is going to jump 14 to 5. Leaving this man hanging here. And 3-7. After the jump, red has the triple jump. and will win the game by trapping this piece here. So instead of the losing 32-28, let's go back to this position and talk about the best 25-22 move. Here we are back at this landing, and instead of the losing 32-28 here, it's best for white to move 25-22, again targeting this core of the board. Now, red's best option at this point is actually to sink the piece with 28. And now white can attack. White can attack 22.18 for the double, or this 22.17 is probably best. And it's best as it leaves this man hanging here. Red is going to develop 
and then after 2 6, white must be careful. White cannot go under the bridge because of the threat of the triple jump here. So instead, it's actually best for white just to sacrifice a piece. If 22 17 here is played next, right can just advance 15 18. But instead, the pitch is best. White is going to march in to get a king. Red is going to attack white's double corner here. And now white is going to crown. Now a lot of books give 610 or 69 as the drawing sequence here. I really like this deceptive 1418 move. Now it does not matter which way white jumps next. If white jumps with the king, red is going to jump back here and then the 27, 24, two for one and we're back to being even for a draw game. If white jumps this 22, 15, Red has the pretty 19 to 23. And then again, it doesn't matter which way it jumps. Let's say it jumps here first. White is just going to go 1 5. And we have the double jump. 3 on 3, an even game. So let's take a look this time, and you can see it from White's perspective. All right, let's go over that 1620 move, but you can see it now from White's perspective. Let's play through the opening once again. And now the 1620. At this point, it is best for white to go 19-16. And as I mentioned before, this 14-18 is a good alternative. It's best to attack it with 26-23 next. But I like this 11-15 natural toward the center of the board, keeping your core in check here. After 26-23, advancing to the center square of 19, white covers it up by going 30-26, and now again the unnatural exchange here with 10-15. White is going to go on square 11. And then after 19-24, it's best for white to pitch the piece 13-9. If 25-22 is played, red has the pitch, can win with 14-18. Instead, this 13-9 is best. And as I mentioned, this 32-28, as tempting as it is, will lose by this 15 18 and you all saw the shot in from the other side so instead going 25 22 is best and now it is also best for red to sink the piece and white is going to move 22 17. red is just going to develop 5-9 White is going to counter that with 3126 through 914, 2622, and now 26. It is tempting to want to go under the bridge, but going under the bridge with 117 will lose. So at this point, it's really just best to sacrifice a piece, go 118.
white is going to march in for a king after 1519. White is going to get a king, threatening these two pieces here. And again, a number of texts give 610, 69, all good. But I like this 1418. I mentioned the 2215 will draw. But let's say white takes the jump with the king first. And now after 27-24, the double jump for a three-on-three three and a clean-cut draw. So this video concludes the Pioneer System series. And as I mentioned previously, only the major variations were covered. I may someday go deeper into additional variations, but for now, this four-part series will serve as the foundation. Please continue to stay tuned as I'll be covering some classic unrestricted openings in upcoming videos. Thanks, as always, for watching.